Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for Sundays at Summit Health. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everyone had a fun and safe holiday. Um, Yeah. Sorry, getting a couple pop-ups here. Anyway, I hope you had a fun and safe holiday. And um, if some of you made New Year's resolutions, I would love if you would write them in the comments and um, we can hear what they are and help you reach them, hopefully. And that's kind of what today is about a little bit, to um, give you every hack we can to help you be able to reach your goals and see results, whether it's you know, a health and fitness related goal, maybe it's spending more time with friends and family, maybe it's reading more, uh, maybe you have some financial goals. Either way, um, I would love to give you everything I can to help you reach those goals. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, The thing we're going to talk about today is honestly probably the most influential piece of helping you reach your goals outside of um, the the work you're actually putting in. So um, let's say your goal is to... um, PR your mile time this year. Something that is going to be really important when it comes to that is obviously doing a lot of running, but probably the next closest one is recovery. And that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what stress is and all the different forms that it comes in, but also what recovery is because the two of them are meant to go together. Stress makes us better. Um, but only if we're recovering properly. So while recovery is a lot more popular than it used to be, it still seems like it's kind of this luxury, like, yeah, I would love to do some gentle yoga and get eight hours of sleep, but who has time for that? And I understand. I get how hard it can be to find time for things like extra sleep and yoga. However, I'm hoping that today with talking about how important recovery really is and how much of an advantage it is, I would love for you to feel like it's as much of a priority as the work you're putting in. So um, just like all of your other healthy habits, you eat well, um, you drink lots of water, you get your workouts in. I want recovery to be a part of those healthy habits and not just be sitting on the back burner. Um, So let's start with talking about stress. A few days stress-free might be nice for a little while, but eventually you'd get bored without having some kind of responsibility or some kind of challenge. Um, But obviously, there's such thing as too much stress too, and I'm sure more of us err on the side of too much stress than not enough. Um, So I want you to think of like a bell curve like we used to see in school where the, the ends are low and the top is high. And stress is kind of that way. So on the on the low side with too little stress, um, you're kind of bored. And then as your stress increases, it starts to grab your attention a little bit. And eventually we get to kind of this sweet spot where we're doing a lot. We're maybe a little bit stressed out, but like we're moving, we're rolling. And you feel like you're in a good routine. If stressors continue to add up, then our performance kind of decreases on the other side where we maybe start to start to freak out a little bit and you know if it goes on long enough you can crash and burn and so what we want is to give you the tools to be able to maintain that stress sweet spot um again most of us probably aren't bored because we have no stress most of us are probably on the side of like i'm a little i'm freaking out a little bit all the time and I would love to manage my stress a little bit better. The way you manage stress is by recovery and recovery can look like a lot of different things. So of course we all have the normal stressors, Um, maybe it's your job, maybe it's raising kids, a tough relationship or caring for a loved one, Um, finances is a really big source of stress. So we're all pretty aware of those but you also might have some stressors that you're not aware of. And they come across as healthy choices. They're good stressors. Um, Things like working out or eating in a calorie deficit because you're trying to get to a healthy weight. These, yes, they are healthy choices, but they are stressors and they are hard on your body. 
and we can't really control or get rid of the main stressors in our lives. Most of us don't have the luxury of being able to quit a stressful job or, you know, money problems. Those things don't just go away overnight. But if we want to get rid of stressors, then it's like, well, am I supposed to just not work out? Am I supposed to not be on a diet so that I'm not stressed out? That's not what I'm saying at all. You can definitely do all of these things and keep these healthy choices, but we just want to make sure that recovery is also a part of the process so that you're able to stay in that stress sweet spot while you're still putting your body under a decent amount of stress. This is where rest and recovery come to the rescue. When we recover, we get our body back to homeostasis. And homeostasis is just a fancy word for when we're feeling good. Um, it's kind of your body's baseline. It's your status quo. Um, how you feel day to day, that's homeostasis. So when you're feeling healthy, you're moving well, you have good energy, all of that, um, that's homeostasis. So when we hit some sort of stressor, even if it's a good thing, our body is off. We're a little bit off of that homeostasis. So we always want to be able to get back to that homeostasis and improve what that homeostasis function is. And I'll go into a little bit more of what that looks like. But getting back to homeostasis can look like replacing your fluids and your glucose after a workout. So when you work out, you lose a lot of fluids, you lose a lot of glucose, which is your body's energy source. So afterwards, you go home, you drink some water, and you eat some carbs to replenish your body and get it back feeling normal. Um, or even like after being sick or injured, you probably don't have the strength and lung capacity that you had before. So being able to get those things back after being sick or injured, or even some intangible ones like feeling mentally restored after having a few days off of work, that, that can also be what it looks like to get back to homeostasis. Um, stress recovery are meant to go together. I can emphasize that enough. I'm going to say it again. Stress and recovery are meant to go together. The purpose of stress is to improve performance. So when you work out, you're actually putting your body under stress. But once our bodies have had time to recover, that's when our performance starts to improve. And our new homeostasis is now at a higher level. If I were to go outside right now and run a mile in six minutes, I might actually die. Like, I might actually die. But if I ran three days a week for a year and worked on my speed while also giving my body time to recover, I might be able to run that fast pretty comfortably and have no problems at all. Um, another example, the very first time I did a one rep max back squat, I had to fight with all I had in me to get 205. Now, after years of consistent stress and recovery, stress and recovery, squat day, squat once or twice a week, give my body time to recover. After five years of that, I can easily move 205 with no problems. And I'm sure all of you have had that experience when it comes to the barbell. So we're going to go through kind of what our stress response should look like. So our body is in, I'm going to draw a picture here because I'm a really good artist. Um, our body is in this steady state, which we call homeostasis. Just a straight line, pretty much steady all the time. And then what happens is we do that workout or we get that phone call, whatever it is, that's the stressor. We're on homeostasis, we hit this stressor, and what ends up happening to our performance is actually that it decreases a little bit. So what this looks like is, um, let's first five calories, like it's fine, you're going, you feel good, and then all of a sudden the heart rate spikes, you start to sweat, your body's burning through all of the energy that you have, and this is your body responding to the stress. We call this the alarm phase. So this happens when you're 
only 22 calories in to a 50 calorie bike and you start to question your life choices and your body start forces you to slow down a little bit because you are working so hard working so hard that your body's like whoa I need to recover but you're pushing through you're working through it and your your body's in a stressful place it can also look like doing wall balls that's set of 50 wall balls your first 10 probably feel pretty good and by 40 45 you that wall ball is starting to feel a lot better than it did before so let's say I ask you to do a one minute sprint on the assault bike and then as soon as you're done I ask you to do it again I'm going to bet that over 99% of us would do worse after immediately doing that test again. Why? Because we need to recover. Everyone knows what that feels like. It would be almost impossible to be able to do it the same thing back to back with no recovery. But once you've had some time to replenish your body's nutrients, bring your heart rate back down, give your muscles a break, and test it again next week, you'd probably do better than you did the first time because your homeostasis now improves. So like we said, we were at homeostasis, we hit a stressor, performance decreased. Then when we have time to recover, our performance increases. And this is, okay, I'm not sore anymore. My legs don't hurt as bad. We increase and then our homeostasis is here now. And that's what years and years of hard work look like. We're at this level. We work hard, we get a little bit worse because we're stressed, we recover, and our homeostasis is now higher than it was before. That can't happen if you continue to put yourself under stress. If you don't give yourself this time to recover, then your performance, you hit another stressor here, your performance decreases again. You hit another stressor here, your performance decreases again and you are actually working against yourself. So let's say you're working out seven days a week, working really hard. If you don't take time for that recovery, your performance might actually get worse and you're just working against yourself. Um, so what does recovery look like? We get it, Lauren. Like stress is hard. We shouldn't stress ourselves out. So what do we do to recover? Um, there's a lot of examples, but we're going to use sleep as an example, because that is hands down the best form of recovery. If we're doing it right, sleep improves our mood and our ability to handle our emotions. We see improvements in cognition, attention, concentration. Um, on the physical side, it helps us lose fat and build lean muscle tissue, um, and or lean tissue like bone and muscle and we're better able to regulate our appetites, um, we feel hungry and full at the appropriate times, and our bodies get rid of waste better. So not only does sleep have a ton of advantages, but the other side of the coin is almost stronger. I could list a hundred reasons why sleep, not getting enough sleep is detrimental, but just to name a few, um, one, on a physical level, obviously we start feeling drowsy. Um, we start seeing problems with our metabolism, which for those of you who are counting your macros and trying to do things the right way, not getting enough sleep can um, stunt that progress because your metabolism is not working as well. And it can even increase your risk of cancer, which is terrifying. Um, emotionally, we become more irritable, more exhausted, and even depressed. And mentally, we have a really hard and we actually have less working memory. The point of all this, it's not only harder to function when you're not recovered, it also severely limits your results that you're working so hard to get. So how can you expect yourself to make healthy food choices or give a workout when you're experiencing all of those symptoms I just listed, it'd be almost impossible. Um, and then it just kind of turns into this cycle, right? Where poor sleep leads to drowsiness. 
and then drowsiness leads to not being able to be as productive at work or at home. Not being productive leads to stress and chronic stress. Chronic stress leads to poor sleep and it just goes on and on. So sleep could be the one that you could change if things like work stress can't be altered. Um, so a lot of us are probably um, feeling a lot of different types of stress as well. Um, I think physical stress is really to recognize. It feels like soreness. It feels like fatigue. But there are also other kinds of stress. And I want to run through a couple of those. I'm also going to put a chart in the comments to help you better identify what kind of stress you're experiencing. And then it will also have some ideas for what recovery might look like. And I'm just going to run through a couple here. But like I said in the comments, there will be a lot more detailed um, descriptions. So the two that I'm going to go through are emotional and mental stress. And when we hear that initially, it might sound like those are the same things, but they're just a little bit different. So a lot of us are probably feeling some emotional stress right now with your events being canceled, or maybe this was your first holiday season without a loved one, or maybe you're feeling a little bit of shame from not accomplishing something in 2021 that you were hoping to. It's a lot. That's a lot to be carrying around. And so some ways to do some emotional recovery can be to just stop and express and recognize your emotions in an appropriate way. Um, have a good cry. Journal how you're feeling and what's really going through your mind. Um, talk with someone you trust. Those are great ways to get it out and not just be carrying it with you. My personal favorite when it comes to emotional recovery is to go to therapy. If you have the means to do it, um, it it's just a complete game changer to go to a good therapist. Um, another way to do it is to just give yourself a break from those difficult emotions. If you're constantly feeling grief, anger, shame, resentment, things like that, give yourself a moment away and do some sort of intentional um, activity to bring out the more positive emotions. Watch a funny movie. Grab a coffee with a friend or grab your kiddo or your dog and just cuddle and give yourself a moment of feeling something else. Um, when it comes to mental fatigue and mental stress, this can look like a lot of those same things but maybe a little bit different like making big life decisions. Maybe you're moving, um, deciding to go back to school, making some sort of investment, um, being overwhelmed with information. It's really hard to sort through all of the information we're being given these days or even falling behind at work. Some ways to mentally recover. Take a break from the thing you're focusing on and let your mind do something fun. So this doesn't, I think normally we kind of try to give ourselves a mental break by tuning out. So opening your phone and scrolling Instagram or turning on a Netflix show that you've seen a hundred times, that's my go-to, and checking out mentally. But that's not always the best way to do it. It is one way to do it. Another one, though, might be still staying mentally engaged, but in a different way. Get creative. Um, if you like to draw, maybe you doodle a little bit or make something with your hands. Go cook a new recipe. Um, research something on YouTube that you've been curious to learn more about. You can still stay mentally engaged and it doesn't have to be in a stressful way. So I know this sounds like a lot to take on, adding recovery into your routine, especially because our society has raised us to believe that rest is lazy. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. It's actually very important and you won't reach your goals if you don't make time to recover and to rest. It also doesn't need to be that complicated. Um, the way that I think of it is thinking like recovery as one of those big orange Gatorade bottles that you see at like a sports game. And every time you 
pour anything out of the spout, it needs to come from what's in the pitcher already. So for us, our Gatorade is going to be recovery. We want to make sure that our Gatorade pitcher is full of things like regular sleep, fulfilling activities, positive emotions, mindfulness, so that it's nice and full. And then when we need to pour some Gatorade out of the spout, when we hit those stressors, like being in a calorie deficit so I can lose weight, or experiencing relationship stress, or dealing with finances, we've recovered enough and we've fueled up enough that we can take on those stressors without losing our minds because we've filled up our recovery reservoir. We need the input and the output to be working together to keep us in that stress sweet spot. So to sum up, recovery really is a life hack. Um, this is your excuse to go to bed an hour earlier, spend a night out with your friends, um, watch that TV show that is total trash but you love it, um, it'll actually help you be able to hit that workout harder. It'll help you make better decisions throughout the day and ultimately get more results for your hard work, which is what we're all looking for. Um, like I said, I would love to hear your New Year's resolutions. Throw them in the comments um, and I will talk to you all in February.